Hello to this episode of the CTO show with Mehmet. Um, as you know, usually I cover latest trends, insights, strategies in topics like cybersecurity, digital transformation, emerging tech. But as you know, sometimes I bring also entrepreneurs and thought leaders, innovators to tell us a little bit about what they are doing and to talk a little bit about the applications or the technology that they are bringing in. And I'm very happy today to have with me on the show, Luis Contreras, who is joining me from the US. Um, Luis, uh, can you introduce yourself to the audience? What, uh, what, what you've been doing and you know, a little bit about uh, your latest uh, company that you'd started? Yes, yeah. Uh, my name is Luis Contreras, uh, founder, CEO of Yuan mobile app. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, this project that we're doing is coming to life. We, uh, we're, it's, it's a mobile app. That's, I, I see it as a utility app. The whole idea behind this started as a dating app um, in the augmented space. So when I had this idea, you know, me being, a, you know, going into this new venture, I thought to myself, uh, before I started, like, let's go after these patents, right? So I, I had a little bit of a different approach. My career has always been Fortune 500, working for a company. Um, so I had this idea for augmented reality app that was, the premise was around dating, right? Because I was looking at things that were missing in the world. And I think about it as a, as a friend, right? You have the capability also in this app to pick a designated driver, right? So you have somebody <clears throat> in a group that's going to be responsible for the others. So you use like a geolocation to, to put on this uh, area for a certain amount of time. If any one of your party members is, is out of the area, it'll notify you and you have the chance to see them via augmented reality. So the idea, the idea started from there and it really just kind of escalated. So there's a lot of different um, use cases for it. Like for the dating platform, Originally, we thought it was like going to be like an algorithm that you're going to be able to use to find your match. And we still have that built in. And we're excited because this is the original idea, but we're not launching this part of it until phase two of our launch. So for phase one, we're taking that technology. And right now, I don't know if you ever use like the iPhone and somebody sends their location to you. Have you seen that? It, it'll, it'll send you their location and the location will send you, like say if you go into a restaurant, it'll send you to the parking lot but it won't go any further. Right. So I think that's where, where our technology is the missing link. And even building this, my uh, development team was excited because they're building it from scratch. There's nothing really else to go off of. So our technology is that missing link. When you, <clears throat> when you open this session, so think about it like a FaceTime call like we're having right now. Yeah. The, on, the only way to see each other is gonna be that if you approve it and I approve it, so it's gonna link our session and you're going to have an augmented view to where the other person is and they could see you. And it's going to be represented by this dot. It's kind of like the dot on the logo. So the dot shows in the middle of the screen and it's going to, it's actually going to move depending on where the other person is. So you're going to move your phone and it'll show you an arrow and distance to the other person. And, and the reason, you know, I love this technology, um, being that, you know, I'm very social. Uh, I like to meet up with friends and other couples and I like to network. <clears throat> so using this, uh, like on a, whether you're at a restaurant and you want to find where the other party is, well, you meet them outside and you guys meet in a big plaza, you'll have first person access to that other person's location and you guys are both able to see each other and just eliminate time. But through this process, we've been able to see that you could use this for so much more. So part of the project also uh, looks to, to help people suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's. So if you have somebody, you know, right now we have it with the mobile phone, but it's going to expand into the mobile watch. So like the, uh, the Apple watch or the galaxy mm -hmm. watch. <laughs> and the reason we're so excited about that is like, you think about all the times that you're at home, right. And, and you have a loved one and they might be going through, you know, an episode and they're leaving the house and you don't know. So now what we provide is a geolocation for a certain amount of hours and you get a notification. And with GPS, when you're, when you're trying to find somebody like, you know, or, or you're trying to get out of a stadium, right? The GPS will sometimes is going to kind of throw you off because it's not really giving you any directions until you're out of the building. And even though it seems like a very small, simple piece of technology, it's so big because I always say 
I just want to use augmented reality to enhance everyday experiences. So when, when you pop up, all we really need is to be pointed in the right direction. And that's kind of what we, what we do and we focus on. So whether it's your loved one that you're trying to find or like a child, your child, you know, and goes out of the area and you're able to, to find exactly where they are, you know, compared to GPS, because we all know that there's Life360 or the capability of sharing that with your, uh, with your loved ones, but, you know, the patents really focus on the augmented reality and the geofence. And you use that for multiple people. And we built it for a group as well. Because you know that in business, you might have somebody's information, but you don't want to share your location, uh, you know, throughout all this time for somebody with just business. But what about if you just do it for this one event, right? And you say, well, we're going to meet each other at um, this restaurant within the plaza, right? It's a huge mall. Um, so you guys all check in. It's going to give you a group code. So you're not sharing your personal information. Everybody receives a group code. The one person you pick is that person that's going to be, you know, the main one seeing everything, or you can pick multiple. And when you get there, it'll give you a notification. You're like, you'll send a notification to somebody and say, hey, they're trying to view your area. So it picks up like a FaceTime call and then you hit approve. And now you guys are both able to see each other. The good thing about it is you're not going to have to need another product or a wearable whether you use it for the social networking. The social networking, I think is interesting. It's a whole new different twist. You're going to be able to create a, uh, like a geolocation around a certain event, right? And you're gonna st uh, start it and you're gonna put your status symbols. So the status symbols could be, I'm in, uh, I'm in the film industry, I'm working in financial, I'm working in tech. So, you know, within this parameter, people say, okay, I wanna be part of this event. And now it's gonna give you the capability of uh, you know, really networking. So most social media, you know, apps really focus on when you're at home. And what I was thinking about what was needed, I go, <clears throat> I think there's, I think there's a lot needed for people to connect when they leave, right? And that missing link, especially with this generation, most people are very career oriented. They barely have time to meet anyone. There's already so many different versions of the same app when it comes to dating, um, when it comes to networking. Everything is really built for home. There's nothing really built for you to meet people. So um, within this world that we're creating, if you have an event uh, or if you have uh, street art or anything that you want to show in this augmented world, you're going to be able to do that and touch so many more people because you're not going to be required to use the goggles. You're not going to be required to use the lenses or anything that's coming out. Now we are going to be uh, transferring you know, the app whenever those glasses do come. So you'll have the capability there. But, you know, we just want to be able to have this technology available. And I think that's why the project came out earlier than we anticipated, because there's such a huge necessity. You know, when it comes to like moments where you see that there's an emergency or you have a loved one, like think about the capability to know exactly where they're at. Sometimes there is no address to send them to. And sometimes you have to be on the move. With our technology, it's a lot quicker than GPS. So GPS is always rerouting you. Right. right. So the moment gives you directions. And if you're moving, it, there's going to be that lag time with us. It's just a uh, direct connect. And the, the fun part was being able to get the tech and make the tech for short range. Long range is the easy one. Short range on a cell phone. Because if you think about it, there's nothing else that really shows directionality when it comes to your, your phone. And being able to create that with the team, that was fascinating. Wow. You know, like... Um... You were talking and I was like just also imagining how many use cases you have touched in just one simple um, application, I would say. Now, which phase you are in in the project? Like, do you have like active users today or like is it are you still in the prototyping uh, phase? Uh, well, no, we uh, we built we built the beta. So we, the biggest thing for us was because the technology didn't exist. So that was the biggest hurdle to make sure that we were able to really perfect that. So. We built that. We're actually going to go commercial with our launch next month. Uh, and in the next couple of days, we start a Kickstarter. It's, it's a little bit untraditional. Generally with Kickstarters, you start very early, just when you have the idea of what you want to do. Um, but, you know, with, with this project, uh, I was able to get some, you know, some small investors right now to, to build. But mostly it was on, on just on myself. I had this idea uh, and I said, you know what, I, I, uh, a lot of things came together at the right time to bring this to life. And I think that's the part that was so interesting. It was all about perfect timing. So, you know, now we're, 
were four, uh, five years when I really started thinking about all these ideas, I got the approval for the patents about a year and a half ago. And my development team had started then. And from, from now, the proof of concept, we were able to give within about three to four months. It took a little bit longer. Like I said, Apple doesn't really have anything to go off of, near, neither do Android, because there's nobody else with this type of app. So yeah. our team was working from scratch to get it. Uh, one of the other things I didn't touch on, and this is one of the parts that we're rolling out for phase one, is, and, and this one I think is more like the identity the identity of the app. When I, when I really think about it, I love all the other features uh, because all the other free features to me are utility. And this one, this is what makes it more of a social media. So, you know, like right now, <clears throat> when you go through Instagram or Facebook and you take a picture, most of the time it's gonna tag you to like the city, right? Like if you're like in Dubai, you could put Dubai. If you're like, you know, in California and like you're like Los Angeles, you put Los Angeles and it tags maybe the beach or the city. But we we focus more on geolocation. So, and when we think about it, like you're, we call it leaving a mark, right? And like, what's more important than leaving a mark, right? For you and for your loved ones. And, you know, I think about, you know, this project and my career and all the things that I would love to pass down to my my kids. You know, I have a son and daughter and, and um, there's special memories that I also share with them. Like think about camping. So wouldn't it be more special that if you take a picture and you could actually put the exact location where that picture was taken. Now, there's there's ways of doing that, right? If you like put this specific location, like on like on Instagram or like wherever, you can go with current location or even Google, right? But there's no, it's not really pushed in in, um, in social media. And to be able to have that view in augmented reality, that's what we're focusing on. So you'll you'll start off you'll start off with just being able to in phase one have a picture and you can share that with people. Think about how big that would be in social media. A lot of people love sharing like things that happen on a particular trail, things that happen when they're out in the city. And sometimes there's not like a place, it's just like a perfect view and their followers or their loved ones wanna see where that was. So you'll, you'll have your regular picture, but on the, on the side, you're gonna have the ability to click on it and, and get a real life view of where that picture was taken. So I think that part of it, you know, and we have like a lot of safeguards for it, but the, the fact is to, to be able to have those marks that you leave, not only for yourself, but for your family, and you could actually pass those down. So, you know, you have certain things where you want to say, oh, I would love to have my kid come with me. Um, and like, oh, this is where my dad took me, right? And now you have an exact representation of where that happened. So geolocation, like, and, and you know, being able to know exactly where things were, I think it's another big part of this social media app. What I loved about the idea personally is that like talking about social media, usually that means you are hooked to, to your device, right? But what you are trying to do is use it for people to get together actually. So I think this is very cool. And the other question I wanted to ask you, because when you talk about AR, augmented reality, so what do I need to use other than my phone to 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 you nothing nothing and I, I think that's the beautiful part you know i think that was what was missing uh when i when i thought about augmented reality i i think when i when you first see augmented reality and everybody goes towards gaming right and yes. and i think that that's hard because i think they missed on that one a little bit i know pokemon go was a big success but we didn't really see any other video games come out of it the demographic for video games, it's not, I'm, you know, I, I play games and I have, you know, family members that are really into gaming. They don't want to leave the house, right? It's, it's, you want to be really into your game. So when you're trying to pass this, you know, levels and you're in a game, but you have to worry about the outside world, that's really tough. I think of augmented reality more of like a utility, right? You want it to just help you with your regular day things. And that's when augmented reality, I really think takes a life of its own. If I'm going to go out anyway and try to meet people, then I want to use it to enhance that experience, have a little fun with it, help me network, help me find somebody. So that's how we took a little bit of a twist and the fact that you're not going to need any special equipment for it. Now, you're always going to have the option to use it right as it evolves and as more things come out. But compared to everything else hitting the market, they're, they're going to be using 
you know, these expensive glasses, you're going to miss a big part of the demographic with that. Uh, I think this is something very cool because uh, from user experience perspective, you know, the less hassle you put on the user, the better. And just, the, yeah. you know, the fact that you install the app and then you get access to all the, I would say, features and benefits you mentioned, it's something really, really cool. Now, like other than, you know, describing it from AR perspective, like what do you think other technologies, which are like trending technologies might fit also for you on like anything like artificial intelligence, maybe like, do, do you think that like, you can also integrate more of such technologies in, in your uh, use case? You know, one of the things that we were looking into was facial recognition, but not to really get on the person. We look at it for because those facial recognition tools allows you to really get an area mapped out. So I think using tools like that for being able, like AI is gonna be important when it comes to safety, right? So as this app progresses and then perception, you know, right now we, uh, the app has the capability of seeing something within a horizontal view. But once you go into the vertical, where, you know, technology is not there yet. So there's, there's still some limitations to it. Like if somebody's on the third floor, right? You could point up the phone and it'll still give you the distance and then you know exactly where they are there. As you get closer, it will have vertical, but that's something that again is still coming in phase two. So like the Apple Watch has the ability to tell you altitude, right? Yeah. So we'll be implementing that as we go into phase two and that's when it, it becomes even more exciting. I, 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 but I, I do wanna to touch on something you said. Most apps, uh, are focused on like connecting you, but you're like at home, right? And and I think with technology now, you could feel as if you're connected in the digital world, but in the real world, you feel like something is missing, right? And I and I think that's what's exciting about this whole project is like when you when I think about the the ability to really connect people on this other platform, and you're gonna you're gonna give people the ability to really make it their own. So it's like, a, it's gonna be very open to the user and how they wanna use it. And I think that's, I'm really interested to see that part and how this takes a life of its own when people are using it and creating these events. I wanna see what kind of events they come up with and I wanna see how to use it. And, and I mean, like you could talk about like a scavenger hunt. You're gonna be able to have something that, that you know, you'll put like a location to and you talk, engage with your users and say, hey, we're going to be a special prize in this area. The The way that I even used it was parking my car. I took a picture of my parked car and it saved everything. So when I was heading out of the stadium, I used the augmented reality just to find my car. And it was one of those fun things to just test in person. But we were in the stadium. And a lot of the times when you go into the stadium, they reroute you, you try to find your seat. And trying to find your car sometimes is, you know, is time consuming on itself. So it's the simple capabilities that I really enjoy when it comes to the app. Or I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Uh, I'm a big football fan and uh, we went to a, you know, a game and there's a lot of, um, they have tailgating. So when there's fans that are on the outside and they do like these big tailgating events and it said, well, we're located in parking lot Brown. And I was like, okay, so you get there and there's thousands of people, right? And, and you're just like, well, how am I gonna find this? And that was like, it's so simple, like to be able to share the exact location, right? With a multitude of people. I think that's the other thing. It's like, how can you share it with the masses? And then how could they find you with ease? So those are the things that I'm really excited about. That's a cool use case also, I would say, because I used to have, but I trained myself not to lose where I parked the car, whether in a huge shopping mall or a, or a large complex. Now, the thing I want to ask you, uh, Luis, like, what do you think, you know, like the experience that you had before, like working with, with big companies and what you have learned being an entrepreneur, like how this helped you really to, you know, because I've seen that the passion, I can see, you know, how you are relating this, but how your previous experience helped you in, in, in coming up with, with new one. Um, in, in a multitude of ways, um, the, the meetings that I've had being prepared, I, I felt like I've been groomed for this uh, position, being able to handle a team, working with a bigger team. And even though I haven't worked with uh, developers, I've always kind of worked with technology and rolling it out. 
Um, and there's been a lot of validation for me throughout this project. You know, I'm not a developer. <clears throat> you know, I'm a, you know, entrepreneur had the idea. Um, so during this process, when we were trying to figure out the technology that was needed, my team was in a slump. It was like two months where we couldn't get past the short range capability. Um, and it was through a conversation that I had networking that somebody had mentioned a different type of technology. And we had a meeting and they said, look, it's not looking too good. It looks like there's gonna be some limitations. So, you know, that night I spent like two days and I went in this rabbit hole of like, just started going through articles and looking through different technology with Samsung and how they were using different technology out there. And I just, I kept going down this rabbit hole and through this, I was able to find things that might work. Um, but usually those other ones use different technologies to work with it. So I just went down this rabbit hole and the next being that we had all my developers, it, it wasn't, you know, they had the same message. It's like, we're not finding anything that's working so forth. So I was able to, not during the meeting, I always feel like during the meeting is not always the best time to bring up something like this. So after the meeting was done, I said, Hey, I just want you guys to look at this. I've been researching this for a couple of days now. And I found some things that definitely look like they're going to help, but it's going to require your guidance. So then I started emailing them the, these articles and the following meeting, we found that that was the technology we needed. So there was validation for me throughout the project of saying like, Hey, this is, I'm very resourceful. I always have been in my career. So, you know, I'm always going to find a way to get things done and the outside perspective, you know, my, uh, you know, I, I, when, even when I look at marketing, you know, in my personal career, it's my outside of the box thinking that has been able to give me success in my career. Um, as opposed to, you know, look at this project. If, if I would have brought this project to life four years earlier, um, like when I first had the idea, instead of the, like uh, getting the patents, if I would have chased development, it wouldn't have worked because the technology that we're using has only been available for about a year and a half. Yeah. So that's, that's the other fun part about it. Um, and that's, I calculated risk. You know, that's when I took about, talked about an app, I said, I have to do a calculated risk. So let me see what is the best way to approach this. And I said, well, let me try to get the patents. If nobody has the idea, I'm going to proceed with a development team because that would be the best way to go. I had other projects that I was doing and this kind of took a life of its own. I got my first, you know, emails from my lawyer saying, hey, the patents got approved. And then from there, it was choosing the right team. And I, I, I'm so happy at my team that I chose. I got a great group of, of developers and people that are excited with the project. They, there's a personal aspect to everyone when it comes to this technology, whether it's somebody who's, you know, told me, you know, my kid, I, we were at the beach, they're playing in the sand. And <clears throat> I turn around to you know, prepare the area that we're going to sit in and they go into the water, but they go, by the time that I looked, they're maybe half a mile down. Kids get lost very easily. You know, uh, I have people that tell me about, you know, parents with the, the Alzheimer's and they're like, man, I, I wish we had this technology now. And that's, that's why, why we're bringing it out early. Cause there's so many aspects to this that really need to be there for the public now to, to help. And as we roll out, we're going to eventually bring out the dating and the social media right now, the social media is going to be you and whoever your friends are, you'll add them manually. So there's no algorithm behind it, but in phase two, there's going to be an algorithm behind that. So you can start sharing this with the world. Cool. Um, where do you think, you know, you one will reach, what do, where do you want to take it? Like what's your, your ultimate <clears throat> goal? Um, right. So, so do you want it to make it like another, of course, like Facebook, do you want to make it like, I don't, I don't know, like maybe like another platform. Um, so what, yeah. what's, what are your ambitions, I would say, for you on? Um, I, I would love for you on to be a household name. You know, there's so many different aspects to this, whether it's going to be the dating, whether it's going to be the social platform. Um, and there's something for everybody, right? So yeah, I, I want to, I, I would love for it to be on that level. And I think we have the capabilities. I mean, just right now, we're, we haven't started our Kickstarter yet, but we've already started releasing um, information. I had a podcast that I did and, and we were starting to release the information there. And it's because of people like you that allow us to speak about our platforms. It, it really makes a big difference because you're starting to see what people like about the product and the idea. And on social media right now, like on TikTok or Instagram, 
we're already starting to get people that are really intrigued by the notion of like, wow, I don't have to have special technology. I'm going to be able to use this as soon as it's out next month. Um, and they want to, I think that's the aspect. I mean, people are looking for that next big thing. Um, but what's better than something you could actually use, you know? And, and I think that's, what's going to separate us. And I'm excited to see that I'm excited for, for this different aspect of what augmented reality could be. Like, if you really think about it, there's nothing that, that you use augmented reality for, augmented reality for on an everyday basis, right? Because mm -hmm. there's the gaming aspect. And then there is the, like, you know, Ikea when it comes to, like, furniture and making sure it works in your room. But I just always thought that there was more of a everyday use for it, right? And that's when you start, kind of like, thinking about, like, oh, wow, right now we're having this conversation. I hope that in a year from now I'm walking through the airport and people are using it to find each other, right? Like once yes. they get out, um, I think that's going to be what's fascinating to me when I start seeing people using it and utilizing it. And then when we start seeing what people create with it, you know, seeing the yeah. first reaction, because it, it really is fun to look through your screen and see the other person coming and you guys are able to see like it. I know it seems like such a small thing right now, but later on that dot is going to be second nature. You're right. going to be like, oh yeah. Yeah, just pull out your phone because that's going to be something that you regularly use. So yeah, we're we're excited about that. We we hope that it gets to that level where you're talking about the next big social media app. Cool. What one final question, and before I will ask you the the where we can find more about you on what's your advice? Because you know you mentioned you didn't you don't have a a technical background, and there are, I know a lot of people. You know they have always yeah I have idea in my mind, but you know I never touch tech. You know, I just know how to use the, a, 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 an iPhone or a laptop or whatever. What's your advice for them to, to really bring their ideas to life? It, it takes people from every aspect to create something great. And, and you can think about it this way. A lot of the times, if you do, I don't know if you watch sports, but a lot of the times the best players that there ever has been don't really translate into being the best coaches, right? So it's always the people that were kind of in the background that become some of the greatest coaches that we ever have. So when you're, when you're creating this technology as a, as a user, I'm thinking to myself, like, what is missing in the world? And some of the best inventions come when somebody just asks, what is, what is the world missing? Right. And when, when you're afraid to move forward, like throughout this whole process, you know, I asked myself, what was the best way to get into this? And, when you start, we live, this is the perfect time to start anything in tech because any questions that you have is just a Google search away, a YouTube search away. You know, like think I, I, a lot of this projects and even when I came up with this technology was me going down the rabbit hole of YouTube, right? To find that source for my, for my developers. And then when it came to like entrepreneurship and then finding the right team, I, I Googled these different companies of developers to find out how did they work with people that were outside the industry, right? So I have these meetings with my guys and my ideas throughout this progress uh, process have always really evolved. And my team, sometimes they'll tell me, well, eh, that doesn't work. And I, I, and I love the open communication, but there's other times that they tell me, man, I, I don't know how you came up with this. Like, this is brilliant. And we have that open communication both ways, but it takes somebody that's outside Right. Cause yeah. I could tell you that I, I push my team a little bit more than they're used to, you know, because I come from a different world. Right. So we're, we're always, I always tell them we're two months away from launch, right. A month away from launch. I go, if we're uncomfortable, it's okay. Everybody should be uncomfortable right now because it's the time that, you know, you push yourself more. Um, and, and those little things, when you, when I talk to them and I see their excitement, it's like, we're all coming together. They believe in me to push this project out, to be the face of this company. They believe in me in that aspect, uh, in our ideas. And then together we're working to build something unique. I really, I really tell people, if you ever wanted to do something, this is the perfect time to do it. We, we live in the information age. All right. Anything that, that you need is out there and available. And, and through that, I also watch, watch videos on, on companies on how they launch products, things that they uh, had issues with. I love the Instagram story. The Instagram story, how they never started as Instagram. They started like a check-in app. 
And after it wasn't taking off, the users were still using it only like a certain number. And they started asking the users, like, why do you guys still use it? Well, we love the photography aspect of it. It's great for pictures. So they changed the whole direction of the company, made it a whole new app. Yeah. So I always look at that, those like those stories and I go, okay, I know what my original idea was, but what does this have the capability of? And there's, there's a capability for so much more. You know, you, you think about, I, and I hate to bring this up, but like, you know, we have issues with, with shootings, uh, you know, like, you know, live shootings that happen yeah. and in schools, in, in the public. So uh, think about when those things happen for you to be able to see your loved one, because how hard is that during those situations to explain something like this, right? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm over here at this. You don't know where you are. Some, some emergency situation just happened. You're afraid. And for you to be able to find your loved one during that time, those are the things that are going to be impactful. Finding your loved one that has Alzheimer's, like that is going to be where this app is, is going to help somebody in their everyday life. And that's, I, I love all aspects of it. I love the safety aspect. I love the social aspect. And I love that it's going to be able to connect people that are looking to find somebody else outside of the regular platform. Right now with, with uh, dating apps, um, I always say the hardest part is you you have 1A, 1B, 1C version, right? Maps.com, Tinder, Coffee Meets Bagel. But <clears throat> it's like another Instagram. You have to have the best version of yourself in order to get a conversation started. Yeah. Uh, but once you go out into the real world, that's when you really meet people because you're not always going to meet people like when they're at home and they have 50 options, right? You're at home. You have all these matches and somebody doesn't say the things that you like, and then you go to the next person. Well, that's, I don't think that's what re dating really is, you know, cause you want to be able to find your match, but you, it might be at a, at a bookstore. It might be at a, at a grocery store. People want to be seen everywhere, you know, and to be able to connect people in that aspect and change the way that people see dating platforms is going to be a uh, unique on itself. That's great. So we, 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 I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's very early for you. I know Lewis, um, I, will <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I will be sharing with the audience in the episode description, and this will be also on YouTube. So I will share the link for your app. Um, thank you again for joining me and, uh, for my YouTube followers, please remind yourself to push the button to subscribe if you didn't do yet and to follow same for the podcast as well uh, thank you very much and until we meet next time thank you thank you guys